Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Commander Legends 2? Dungeons and Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander deck. Commander decks 8 through 11 of the year are each set in Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms, featuring both reprints and original card designs in a fully constructed, ready to play, right out of the box Commander deck. But at an MSRP of $45 each, with several already selling on the secondary market for much more than that, just how worth it are these decks for a new player looking to get started? started in the format, or possibly even the game. What reprints of note are there and which new cards offer the most to established players? Most importantly, how well do these decks play, both against one another and against an established player's deck? All those questions and more are what's in store, so let's take a look. A Commander Legends 2 Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander deck contains the following. A 100 card ready to play right out of the box Commander deck, which within it includes three premium foil cards, 10 original made just for Commander cards, a two card quote unquote collector booster sample pack, one cardboard display Commander, 10 double-sided tokens, a cardboard life tracker, and a cardboard box. The price on these is $44.99. I think. It's hard to say because Wizards of the Coast doesn't want to tell you what their products cost anymore. I think it's $44.99, though on Amazon most are selling for $49.99 at the cheapest, even in their environmentally friendly packaging. So maybe Wizards of the Coast raised the price on this product again to now $50 each? Oh, maybe that's why they don't want to tell you MSRP, so they can raise prices and you don't really know that they raised prices. You just think, oh, it's the secondary market charging more when Wizards has raised prices. Who can say? Who knows? Maybe they raised prices. Eh, it's $45 to $50 each. What's amazing is that the previous Commander Legends Commander decks are still for sale. As of today, for $14 and $20 each. A beautiful throwback to a time just a few years ago when a Commander deck was selling for $19. 99 and not $50 and up. The most noteworthy difference between Commander Legends 1 Commander decks and Commander Legends 2 Commander decks are that these come with the deceitful Collector Booster Sample Pack, a pack that uses the same artwork as Collector Boosters and is presented on the front of the box in an intentionally confusing way so as to make people think there's a free Collector Booster Pack included when in fact it is just two magic cards at random. Somehow two magic cards is a booster booster pack, a sample pack. So I'm just gonna say this right now, spoiler alert, but these commander decks are actually excellent in many, many ways, as I'm about to illustrate. You might even say that these are some of the best commander precons in years across the board. But I bring up the hidden MSRP, the intentionally deceptive collector booster sample packs, as acts of what I can only describe as bad will on the part of Wizards of the Coast. And it really is a shame because the company doesn't have to resort to such practices, trying to trick you into thinking, oh, there's a collector booster pack in here. I better buy it. And then, oh no, it's just a sample pack. You don't need to do that in order for these commander decks to sell. Lean into the fact that they are constructed with excellence. Lean into the fact that they have great new designs and valuable reprints. That is the way to promote this product, not through, oh, we don't want to let you know if we raised the price or not. So I bring it up. It is rather unnecessary. Now, do I have evidence for my claims that these are well-constructed commander decks, that they do have extreme value within? I do. Let's start with that financial value. If you were to purchase every card in these decks by themselves, party time would set you back $191.26. Draconic Descent comes in at $164.67, while Mind Flayers would cost $143.52. Finally, Exit from Exile would cost you $117.98 to assemble on your own. Now, Commander Precons each contain 100 cards, and with 
so many cards, even when many are bulk in the zero to 99 cent range, that can add up and increase the price. So what if we were to take away all that bulk? Just how much value is left in each of these decks? The answer is quite a lot, because when looking at non-bulk cards, cards valued at a dollar and up, we see that Party Time has 31 cards left in that range and a whopping overall value of $140 non-bulk. Now that price is largely boosted up by a pair of new cards, Black Market Connections and Deep Gnome Terramancer, that are certain to become format staples. But it's not the only thing of value here. And we've got excellent reprints in the form of Savine's Reclamation and Mutavolt. Draconic Descent has 37 non-bulk cards, the total value of which comes into $127.81. The Dex Commander, Furkag Cunning Instigator, is its most valuable card, but there are notable reprints here as well. And this is one of those decks where there's a lot of value in the range of two to five dollars, which I actually rather like, meaning it's not just one chase card in the entire deck. Mind Flayers has 29 cards worth a dollar or more, coming out to $100. $112.60. And once again, yes, the new commander is the most valuable card as of launch, but you've also got cards like Hunted Horror and Curtain Call as the most valuable reprints. Last, and though least in financial value, this may not be least in terms of gameplay as I'll get to a moment, is Exit from Exile. And though it only has 24 cards worth more than a dollar, you're still getting a respectable $83.20 of non-bulk value. But yes, that price point is a lot smaller than the others, but you've got cards like Jessica's Will. Jessica's Will reprinted here in this deck. This is a card that if you're in red, you want to run Jessica's Will. Not to mention we've got cards like Xenagos the Reveler, which is Kaya's Cradle on a Planeswalker. Incredibly coveted cards like Three Visits, not to mention Nature's Lore. Two of the very best ramp spells ever printed are here. It's a great deck. I really want to say to you right now that that $83.20 is deceptive. There's more to these than just buying them and selling off or trading the pieces. Yeah, that's important, but it isn't everything. Because of course, what good are a bunch of valuable cards if they don't win you some games? Now, I myself really hope to win a game of Magic the Gathering someday, and as I always say in these videos, how the decks play is just as important, if not more so, than how much they are worth. But before I get into discussing the decks individually, I have two things I need to comment on. The first is a unfortunate complaint about the land bases of these decks, which I feel are a noticeable step down from those of other recent entries. Gone are the reveal lands, and even that commander precon stalwart exotic orchard. This has always been an area that the precons needed to improve upon, and it seemed like they were heading in the right direction with decks from earlier this year. But these have really backslid, and though it is only a little, it's very disappointing. On a positive note, the second matter I really want to point out is that these decks are built around themes and strategies that strike me as quite unique, and that is a great thing. For the last few years, the Commander Precons have tended to focus on some well-worn strategies, be they tribal synergies, plus one plus one counters, or equipment shenanigans. While there have been exceptions, it has been rare to see a whole set of Commander Precons dive so deeply into novel territory. Draconic Descent, the blue-red deck, is a forced combat build masquerading as a dragon tribal deck. There are a solid 13 dragons in the deck, including the commander, and over 20 cards that force opponents' creatures to attack. We have seen plenty of cards play around with goad and other forced combat themes throughout the history of commander precons, but I believe this is the first to be dedicated to that theme. Even when your opponent's creatures are not goaded, there are cards like Stuffy Doll, Brash Taunter, and Propaganda, which will make your opponents think twice about attacking you. It's really good to see defense in-depth deployed in a commander precon, and I personally enjoy this strategy quite a lot. But that's just what we have here, and I couldn't be happier. Party Time, the white-black deck, is all about, you guessed it, party. I always thought that party played around in some interesting design space. And while it did not prove a powerhouse at the time it debuted in Zendikar Rising, I'm glad to see it return with some additional help here. In order for party to work to its full potential, you need to control a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, and a wizard. And there is a nice mix of the four creature types in question here, with rogues perhaps slightly underrepresented. 
but given that the commander is a rogue herself, that shouldn't be much of an issue. To complement, all of the potential party members are a handful of creatures with the changeling ability, allowing them to be all creature types at once, and there's also a Maskwood Nexus and Mutavolt to help make up for any missing party members. This deck has a lot of value to be had in game, and I love that this go-wide strategy has a lot of support. Mind Flayers, the blue-black precon, finally gives support to a tribe that everyone has been clamoring for. Horrors. Yes, horrors. And Mind Flayers uses these horrors in a really interesting way, milling your opponents and stealing things out of their graveyards. While mill and theft may be some of Blue Black's oldest tricks, seeing them built around an unconventional tribal skeleton is rather novel. Notably, the land base here is slightly better than the other decks, and I found in my practice games that gave it a nice bit of consistency. Even so, of the four decks, I would argue this is probably the weakest right out of the box. And while it's still perfectly playable, it's the one I would point those who like to upgrade towards first. There's a fun skeleton, pun intended, that you can build upon. Finally, we come to Exit from Exile, the red-green deck. Faldorn Dreadwolf Herald is the deck's primary commander option. The strategy here is simple. Exile cards, cast those cards, and profit. There are numerous ways to do so in the deck, from Cascade to Impulse Draw, but all work together to keep the strategy rolling. Speaking of that strategy, as far as I can tell, there has never been one like this in Commander before, let alone in a precon, which is not only pretty cool, but exactly what I like to see with Commander precons. And based on my experience, this deck is easily the strongest of the four, rarely running out of things to do and rewarding you for doing them, which is the hallmark of a solid Commander deck, and proof positive that the monetary value of magic cards is not everything you should be looking at. Even the weakest of these decks is a great pickup, assuming you're not paying a markup. Do not pay markups, but do not just try and scoop up the most valuable of these. The decks are all very well constructed and especially fun to play against one another or even just sitting down to play with friends who have established decks. Yeah, that's everything you want from a product like this. Yes, I feel Exit from Exile is the strongest of the four and Party Time the deck with the most overall value, but I urge you to choose a deck based more on personal preference, a commander that you find appealing, a color combination that you love, or a strategy that you want to begin upgrading. I firmly believe you cannot walk away from buying any one of these having made the wrong choice, so long as you, say it with me now, do not pay markups. But of course, if these are marked up everywhere, what is one to do? Well, the commander precons from just a few weeks ago as well as the ones from a few weeks before that, and before that, are often not only below MSRP, but sometimes below it by quite a lot. Check with your local game store always, as sometimes they are clearing unsold commander decks off the shelves. And if you do not have a local game store, you can always go check out cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC, where in addition to all of my favorite products and accessories from over the years, I've added a selection of commander precons that are going for less than $45 each. If nothing else, seeing this list of commander precons that are going for so little might give you ideas of which ones to hunt for at your local stores, or maybe you might just want to pick up one of these. Do not pay markups. Final conclusion, Commander Legends 2 Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate may be some of the most expensive commander decks ever sold off the shelf, but they are also some of the best in a long while. While there is some range in both financial value and power levels amongst the four, all four are absolutely worth their ever-increasing sticker price for both new and established players, offering a fun, engaging, and very well-constructed deck to play right out of the box, and many excellent reprints and original cards. Commander Precons continue to be one of the best and most consistent products Wizards of the Coast puts out. Only I could say the same for the Commander Legends 2 set itself, but that, my friends, is another video. The grade here on the Commander Precons, not the Commander Legends 2 set itself, is an enthusiastic solid A. But again, do not pay markups. And I hope very much this video, like all my videos, has been of some help to you. You can help me out a lot just by remembering to subscribe, hitting that like button, 
leaving a comment, or best of all, better than anything you could possibly do, just sharing this video with a friend, whether individually or on your social media. That helps out a lot. And remember, whether you are buying Commander Precons or just the singles you need for the decks that you want to build, or perhaps only a pack of card sleeves, when it is possible, where it is reasonable to do so, always try and spend that money at your local game store, the place that you spend time playing this great game. You're supporting your Magic community when you do. Welcome to Shuffle Up and Play. We have Jamie Parks, Splinter Twin, LSV's Birthing Pod. Jamie Park was the first pro Magic player that I looked up to. And I'd also like to advocate that I despise Luis. <laughs> <laughs> no card in any of our decks can be over one dollar. What am I supposed to find with a dollar? We, we might as well just play popper then. What, what's the point? It goes the fastest, because it's red. It's statistically more likely to be pulled over by the police, so it means it goes faster. I'm going to throw that Sarah Avatar. What kind of seven is this? Down to five, down to five, down to five, down to five, down to five. Guess Would you like to pay the two? Guess what, baby? I ain't doing, I ain't doing jack. 